good afternoon. Everyone come on in. Hi, Rachel. If I don't see your comments or see that you come in, it's because I'm driving. How are you doing, Rachel? I hope everything is good with you. Hey, Davidra. Thanks for joining. Happy Wednesday. I'm blessed, Rachel. I really am blessed. God is so faithful. And I am just blown away by him on the daily basis situation. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about yesterday. So, and I, I'm just going to kind of give you a little bit of a background. So I am from, well, I my personality is an all or nothing personality. Um... Either I'm all in or I'm not in at all. And that goes for most situations in that I deal with. So one of the things that that does not apply to necessarily is prayer. And I know I talked about prayer the other day. I talked about prayer journaling and I shared with you guys, uh, with you all, some of my experience with prayer journaling and how God speaks to me. And so, you know, just, just say, I am an all or nothing kind of person. Like if I'm going to do something, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to be a hundred percent committed. I am going to, you know, if it's, if it's, you know, a job, a career, uh, if it's volunteer work, you know, no matter what it is, and I just really would love for my prayer life to be that same way. I mean, who wouldn't, right? I would love to be the all or nothing and be all in for prayer. Now, don't get me wrong. My desire is to be all in for prayer. My desire is to not have a day that I miss spending my time with Jesus. I don't want to miss it. I don't ever want to miss it. That is that is what my desire is. That is what I my my state my faith statement is is that I want to be able to spend time with God every day and hear from him every day and gain strength and knowledge and wisdom and direction and instruction and whatever he would have for me. And so let's talk about yesterday. So yesterday, my alarms were not set to wake me up to spend time with God. Now, let me just help you with something. I know that there has been there have been days when my alarm has not went off. And I have still managed to get myself up in time to have prayer time between the six and seven o'clock hour, which is what God told me. And so I'm pretty sure. That Holy Spirit woke me up and I rolled over and went back to sleep because my alarm hadn't went off yet. I can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure that Holy Spirit woke me up. I'm pretty sure. And so, being confident of that very thing is the first thing that I want to point out. Being confident of the, of the fact that Holy Spirit woke me up. I know that Holy Spirit woke me up. And I am going 
12 miles an hour because there's a biker on the road and the road is not big enough for there to be a bike lane. There's not a sidewalk and this is a no passing zone. So it doesn't matter that she's a biker. I'm not going to pass her until there's a bike lane. So I'm going 15 miles an hour and that's okay because I've got time. Anyway, let me get back to my story. So, I jumped out of sleep at 8 o'clock. Ha- knowing that I was supposed to be up. Because at 3 o'clock in the morning, I got up to go to the bathroom and saw messages from my manager that she had to take her mom to the ER. And that she needed me to work from 8 to 10. So I knew I had to be up at 8 o'clock. I figured, well, my alarm will go off, and then I'll get up, and I'll get ready, and I'll do what I got to do, and I'll make sure that, you know, people get what they need to have and get their breakfast and whatever, and then 10 o'clock will roll around, and she'll be here, and then I can be on about my day. Woke up at 8 o'clock. Now, mind you, there's a, there's a resident that we have that has to get her med before an hour before she eats which on yesterday was not a big deal because she doesn't go to work so I get up I go upstairs I haven't spent time with God yet I go upstairs I am frustrated because I haven't spent time with God I'm feeling bad about myself because I haven't spent time with God I'm kicking myself in the rear end because, again, I haven't spent time with God. Okay, let me re- re- let me remind you, or if you've just popped on, I am an all-or-nothing kind of person under n- most circumstances. So, I was like, okay, well, at 10 o'clock, when I get done working, I'll go downstairs and I'll have my time with God. Perfect. You know, yeah, I didn't get to go that the first part of my day, but I'll give them the first part of my day that's free. You know what I mean? So my my first, you know, the first fruits of my day where I'm not working, I'll give him that. And then, and it'll be okay. I'll be okay. So then I stopped kicking myself, even though I was still a little frustrated, but you know, stopped kicking myself at that point. I'm like, I'm still going to give him the first part of my free day. Right? Well, my relief didn't show up till three o'clock. Still haven't spent time with God. Beyond frustrated at this point because this keeps happening. And I understand that things happen. Um, And it just seems that I end up taking the brunt of it. And so I got frustrated. I was not happy. Um, But I dealt with it. And so I'm like, okay, well, at 3 o'clock, I'll go downstairs. I'll spend time with God. Again, trying to give God the first part of my free day. Well, she sends me a message when she's on her way. She's getting me something to eat. Okay, good. So she got me something to eat. My mom needed me to take her somewhere at four o'clock. And so it ended up that I left, took my mom where she needed to go, went back to my mom's house, fell asleep, And still hadn't spent time with God. I'm like, my friend had posted on Facebook. She posted a, um, a video of her prayer time yesterday morning. And it just blessed me. I mean, you know, I love to see people just, you know, being touched by God. I just love it. It's, it's one of the things that makes me just, oh, I love it. And so she showed this video but that Holy Spirit told her to show. And I believe, honestly, that Holy Spirit told her to show this video or to share this video for my benefit and my benefit alone. It may have benefited other people too, but I believe it was just for me. Just saying. So I, in turn, still hadn't spent time with God. Well, she had posted that video and then she posted a question. Have you spent time with God today? And so in the comments, I put a big fat N-O because I had it. And 
when I did that, I was like, but I still, I still can. It's not like this day is over, you know? So right then and there, I started writing my prayer. And as I was writing my prayer, you know, I was just bearing all to God and asking him to forgive me and praying that he would. And I got done with my part of the prayer. I'm at the church now, so I can stop. Um, I got done with my part of the, with my part of you know what I wanted to say to God and what I felt like I needed to you know flog myself or whatever. And I was, you know, I I just I put the pen down and I just started crying and I was like, you know, God, I'm so sorry. I my desire is for you to have everything of me and for whatever reason I keep having just this hard time with prayer and I know the reason is because prayer is my connection to God and the more connection I have with God the the, the easier it is for me to not fall into temptation and to not believe lies and to not allow the enemy to come in with garbage and excuse me sip alert And so, I clearly hold, I clearly heard God say, pick up your pen. I actually it was pick up the pen, is what he said. And so I picked up the pen and he began to just speak to me. And I was just bawling through the whole thing. Because it was, it was a correction, but it was done in such a way that, you know, it was like God, you know, it was just a sweet rebuke. You know, it was... You know, stop worrying about things that are not your responsibility. Some stuff is your responsibility and some stuff you have to do. But some stuff is not your responsibility. I'm sorry. i got to roll this window down because it's a little bit warm at the moment. Some of the stuff is not your responsibility. Some of the stuff is not for you to do. Hey, Candace. You know, some of the stuff God is requiring of you, yes. He requires you to be intentional. He requires you to spend time with Him. He requires you to spend time in His Word. He requires you to spend time in worship and to spend time with other believers. These are things that are required for your strength. They're not a heaven or hell issue. It's not about heaven or hell. It's about strength or weakness. It's about having your armor on or being, being vulnerable to any attack without any type of defense in your hand. And when we realize that, it changes the focus of prayer from being this drudgery thing or this, oh, I have to pray. And, you know, and then when we do happen to miss a prayer time, and this is why I'm talking about this, because this is what happened yesterday, we totally, like, give ourselves left and right hooks and and sucker punches and all kinds of stuff because we miss time in prayer. The fact of the matter is one, yes, God tells you when he wants you to pray sometimes. And you know, sometimes you don't make it for that time. But the reason why he says he wants you to give that specific time to him is because he knows that that is the start of your day. He's, he knows that that is when you will gain the most strength because you're coming off of sleep, you're rested, your mind is clear, you don't have a whole bunch of crap that happened in the day to um, have to fight through to get to the presence of God. Now, mind you, I will get to the presence of God regardless because that's just, like I said, I'm an all or nothing kind of person. If I'm going to go in, I'm going in and I'm getting what I'm supposed to get no matter how hard it is. However, in the morning, it's not that difficult because you don't have a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> piled on you from the day. And so the beautiful part about it is, yes, God told me between the six and seven o'clock hour. That's what he told me. However, 
if I miss it. He's not waiting around the corner with a baseball bat to beat me upside the head. So why am I beating myself? All he wants is for you to spend time with him. And it doesn't matter when. The 6 a.m. hour for me is easy, is not easy because I'm not a morning person. But it is easier when I wake up at 6 o'clock for me to have a clear head and say to God what I really want to say without having other stuff to fight through and to hear his voice without having to shut my mind off. He's pretty smart when he says those type of things, when he, when he makes those plans and when he says that this is what you... This is what I want you to do because he knows that this is going to be the most effective time. It's not that any other time is bad or wrong or insignificant. The Bible says we need to spend time with God. Yeah, but Rachel, we we don't need to be doing that because it's not about it's not about when or how long. You know, we, we get into this legalist mindset and that's, that's, that's me to a T. That's the way I've been. It's changing, but that's the way I've been. What we need to understand is prayer is not about the act of doing it. It's what it does for us, how it prepares us, how it puts us in a position to be strong and not fall to temptation and not falter and not lose our footing and not be uh, susceptible to the lies of the enemy. These are things that, that we will face every day for the rest of our lives. But if we prepare ourselves by being obedient and spending time in prayer, spending time in worship, spending time with other believers, spending time in, you know, in the word, they say the word already. I don't remember in worship. Yeah, I know. Well, he's helping me now. He's helping me now. And the thing of it is, is that we need to understand that those things, you're not going to go to hell if you don't pray. You're not going to go to hell every single day. You're not going to go to hell if you don't read your Bible every day. You're not going to go to hell if you don't go to church. You're not going to go to hell if you don't worship. You're, those are not heaven and hell issues. They are strength or weakness issues. They're protection or vulnerability to the bad, which is not a bad thing. Being vulnerable is not a bad thing, but being vulnerable to the attack of the enemy and the lies of the enemy is a bad thing. And so what we need to understand is that if God gives you a specific time with everything within you, attempt to do that. If you fall short, don't beat yourself up, ask God to forgive you and then spend that time and don't worry about it. Because the last thing he wants is someone spending time with him because they feel obligated. Okay, let me just ask you something. If you have someone in your life and they've committed to something, like over a period of time, and toward the, toward the middle to the three quarters of that period of time, you start noticing a change in their attitude and they're only doing it because they feel obligated because they gave you their word. Do you really want to... Do you, do you really want them there if all they're if they're only doing it because they feel obligated and it's not in their heart? No. And God, I mean, not that he, not that he's going to say, well, you're only doing this because you're no. But he he it gives him so much joy when we do it because we want to. You know, when I was a kid, mom and dad gave us chores, and I used to hate doing chores, but I did them because I was obligated. Yeah, right? I know. <clears throat> I did chores because it was part of being in the family. And I, I was obligated. Did I want to do them? Absolutely not. I would rather have went out and played or rode my bike or anything else but that. <laughs> and I'm pretty much, well, except homework. But now, when we go over to the rent's house, which actually right now their house is being remodeled. Um, when we go to their house... I help do I help do dishes be, help with dishes because I want to. I help clean up, sweep, table, whatever because I want to. I go and I help set set up for things because I want to, not because I'm obligated and not because I feel like if I don't they won't love me. 
See, a lot of times what we, we go into this prayer thing with this attitude is if I don't, then he's not going to love me or he's going to love me less. There is nothing that you can do that will cause God to love you any less. Nothing. Not a thing. Even if you turn your back on him, he still loves you the same. And what we do as human beings, because we have conditional love for people. Don't say you don't. Don't raise your hand or don't look at anybody right now. I'm just kidding. That's what my pastor says all the time. (laughs) I absolutely love it. And no men should be looking to the left or to the right, he says, when he makes comments. And the same thing when he, you know, he, he's a joker. I love him. But there's nothing that we can do. But we, we go into this prayer thing with this, if I don't do this, then I'm not going to measure up. And, and he's not going to love me. And, and I'm going to be, you know, on his list of bad people. What? For one, God doesn't have a list of bad people. He doesn't have a list of bad people. Of people who have fallen short. Of people who don't measure up. He doesn't have one of those. We might. We might have a list of people that we keep at at arm's length. We might have a list of people that we kind of let a little bit closer. And then we have our list of, you know, VIP section. But he doesn't have a list like that. We are all in the VIP section for him. He wants us to know everything about him. And he wants us to know that he loves us regardless of anything that we may say or do. And so when we go into this prayer thing, we need to understand that this is not about necessarily the act of doing it. It's about the benefit that we get from it. It's about, one, the blessing and obedience, because the Bible does say to pray. So when you pray, you're in in obedience, and blessing always follows obedience. And so if you are praying at any point in your day, whether it's 6 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 in the afternoon, 11 o'clock in the morning, whenever it is, it's obedience. Now, if he's given you a specific time, which he's done with me, bless his name, then whatever you can do to make that happen, make it happen. If you miss it, it's not time for you to to hit yourself. It's not time for you to give yourself a sucker punch in the gut. It's not time for you to, to, you know, to start going through the whole thought pattern of, well, I might as well give up now because I've already, you know, I might as well just not pray then because I haven't, I didn't make my six o'clock hour. Are you kidding me? Oh, these are things that went through my mind. And I, you know, now I, when I say it out loud, it's like, that's ridiculous. It's just, oh God, help us, Lord. Help us to realize that you told us to pray because it's for us. It's to prepare us and protect us. It's not about checking, check it. Okay, prayer, check. Bible reading, check. Went to church, check. It's not about checking off things off a list. It's about having that intimate relationship with him so that he can tell you, no, I don't want you to go into that place because there's something that's going to happen and I don't want you part of it. Or yes, you need to go here. Or at two o'clock, I need you to go here. Or at four o'clock, you know, Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. We need to understand that prayer, just like repentance, is a me heart issue. Repentance means my heart is turned toward God. Prayer means that my heart is open to God so that he can speak to me. And so I just wanted to come on and encourage you guys. Stop beating yourself up. 
And I'm talking to myself too because yesterday I had a little bit of a beat up session. And after I was done, I felt so good. I cried and I just asked God to forgive me and I just felt his love and presence and acceptance and it was just amazing. And that blows me away. And it shouldn't because he is such a good father. You know, any, any, I mean, when you have, well, I can't say from my own experience, but I've heard that when you're young and you make a mistake, when you're a kid and you sass or lie or hit or do something that you're not supposed to, you disobey your parents. That does not mean that your daddy's love is any less and that he still won't welcome you into his arms when you come running. I don't have that experience because I didn't have a dad. However, I have a heavenly father and he is always willing to open his arms to me and you. Well, I hope this blessed somebody today. I am so blessed by God. After I got done I went to my friend's post because she had commented on my thing. And she said, you still have time. And I put a comment, I'm like, I just did. And I just put up some crying faces and, a, and prayer hands. And, and then I sent her a text message and I'm just like, I, I just don't. Sometimes I just don't understand why he continues to speak to me when I don't make him a priority. And that's when he said to me, he said, because I love you. And no matter how long I have to wait, I want to speak to you and I want to hear you speak to me. I know everything that happens in your day, but I want to hear you talk about it. I want to hear you tell me about it. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time, God. We thank you that no matter what we do, you always love us. God, we repent for wrong attitudes and listening to the voices of the enemy. God, give us a renewed desire to spend time with you, a hunger and thirst for your presence, God, and for your word, and for gathering together with other believers, God, and for worship. Heavenly Father, we just give you praise and glory and honor. You're a good father. And we love you. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being merciful. Thank you for your grace. And Father, if there's someone that is listening to this broadcast, either on live or on the replay, that does not know you as their personal savior, Lord, I just thank you, Father, that they will just say a prayer today and give their lives to you. And they will realize that it's not about being good enough for you. They can come as they are, and you will help them. And you will accept them and love them and hold them and embrace them and heal them, clean them up. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that they will admit that they're a sinner and that they need a Savior, that they will realize and have a revelation, God, that you send your Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins and our sicknesses, and they will give their lives to you. Father, I just thank you and give you glory and honor. Thank you for this time, God. I thank you, Lord, that this word... God, would take root quickly in people's hearts, that the enemy will not steal it. I seal it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Well, I've got to get in here and get this church clean. Well, technically it's the youth building, but it's where they have youth service. So I guess you could say it's a church. Youth church. Um, and how fun is it to clean the youth building bathrooms? Because that's my job. <laughs> Yay! But I love you guys, and I'm so happy that you joined. If you're joining on the replay, please share this out. Um, I will be putting it on my YouTube channel, uh, which is Straight Talk with Stacy. if you're interested. I love you too, Rachel. Uh, if you're interested in following me on YouTube... It is Straight Talk with Stacy. And there's no E in Stacy. It's just S T A C Y. I love you guys, and I pray that you have a blessed rest of your Wednesday. And I will see you all next time. <laughs>